eschatology, a warning to humanity. A big welcome to you. Um, I'm really doing this vlog because I want to share with you a warning which came to me. Now it came from meditation, so you know you can take it with a pinch of salt, but I wanted to share it with you, not least as it's the lead zone from other vlogs that I've done recently. And I suppose the main concern of the warning is how AI, or artificial intelligence, has discovered how to manipulate human behaviour. And my concern that this will have disastrous consequences for humanity. Now, I suppose we can link it back to eschatology or the Armageddon. All religions have a view of the end of the earth eschatology. Um, and I guess many of you can see signs of it right now. And now I don't propose to go through a list of these signs and stoke up fears, but simply to locate my revelations somewhat, and I mean the word somewhat, within this tradition. Although I suppose the one thing that I would draw your attention to, at one side, is that people will increasingly earn money by unlawful, to us Muslims, haram ways. And now given that I see all paper or fiat money as being haram, uh, and digital currency as being completely around and then I think this is very poignant. In previous blogs I've argued that the black magic is the imposition of one's will on another and now I've also commented and maybe you'll, if you've not heard it before you'll realise this is a very broad definition. A definition which includes many things that most of you probably don't consider black magic, especially many things or many practices within what we call business. Nevertheless, I stand by it. An alternative definition is that all magic is about getting us closer to God. And black magic, uh, us believing that we are God. Now this fits in with Kajalan, whereby the lower veils include magic, and we believe that they understand, they help us to understand God's majesty. And now there may be some of you shouting at me, some of you from an evangelical tradition, shouting at me now, and um, let, let's say you're from an evangelical Christian tradition. Um, but, you know, what were Jesus' miracles? Uh, you know, magic is that which we can't explain. You know, I, I don't like this definition, but let, let's use it because it fits here. Magic is that which science is yet to explain. Um, so, you know, to simply write off all magic as, as, as bad, as the evangelicals, Christian, Muslim, I'm sure, probably even Jewish, um, and maybe other religions too, um, claim that all magic is, 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 is evil. Um, it, it's far too simplistic. It's far too simplistic. If God created these things, then there has to be a reason, and that's the Kajawan view of it. Of course, I've said that all magic is about getting closer to God, whereas black magic is believing as God. But the closer we get to God, it does reveal to us that God is within us all. So I, I've likened it to a stick of Blackpool rock, that you cut us anywhere and you will find God within us. Just as if you cut a stick of Blackpool rock, you'll find Blackpool written throughout it. Um, so, as we get closer to God, 
we believe that God is within us. Um, whereas, but critically, that we're not God. And when I say within us, we must believe it's within us all. So critically, that we're not God. Now, in previous vlogs, I've argued that maybe we're everything. Uh, maybe we're every human, maybe we're every living creature, maybe we are every inanimate object, maybe we were every spiritual object. Um, and of course that would include God. But it's only the ego that makes us believe that we actually are God. And I suppose the, the quickest way to establish we're not, we're not God is just ask yourself, did you create the universe? And uh, I think most of us would answer no. We might answer that we're creating the universe now, however, and that gets us back into this circle that God is within us all. So behaving as though we're God, I would argue is also black magic. And again, that's an incredibly broad definition of black magic. I've got a final definition that I want to throw out because I think all three are incredibly relevant here. And you might be frustrated at me, you know, particularly if you're from, from the United States, using so many definitions. Uh, because I found that people from the United States love to define it and then break it down into little bits. Whereas I'm using all these definitions because I think all have some relevance um, and all help us to understand the subject that we're talking about. So a further definition, you may have heard me talk about that wonderful light of love and of bliss. Uh, well, black... <coughs> Black magic would be aptly named because it's an absence of that light. So where there is where there is no light is darkness. So in magic where there is no light, then it is black. I've also argued that we're tricked through our own free will, but we're tricked into giving up our will to follow the will of others, so that we eventually lose that free will. And these tricks appeal to our ego. They appeal through greed, in particular, to give up living as God intended us to. So you could see this as, as Milton Satan. Now, you may know that I, I don't like to consider the devil and Satan very, very much. But if you do think that the devil and Satan are important, then it's Milton's Satan. Or if you like, a Heathcliff-like seducer. And above all, this seduction works through guilt and through fear. It divides humanity into warring camps, with man seeing other men as different, dangerous, and ultimately, this leads to hatred. So it's this guilt, it's this fear that, it, that we see others as, as different, maybe even as evil, and eventually we end up hating our fellow man. That we give, when we give up our free will, I've argued that we become avatars because we're no longer acting according to our will but to somebody else's. Now, alternative words for these would be meat golem, or, say, moral automata. And when we become that, we're simply following impulses, in particular greed. Now, I've argued before, and, and you, can, you can check on those blogs, but this does have major implications for God's judgment. Because whilst we have sinned in giving up our free will, once we've given up our free will, it's no longer our will. So what is it that 
that God is judging. Now this concept of avatars, I've also hypothesized that it's related to what is known as the dark triad of personality, which includes narcissism. Uh, that by inducing greed and appealing to the, e to the ego, uh, people begin to follow the assumptions of the narcissist. So, narcissism is all around us, and I can see those assumptions growing, and more and more people following it. And in doing so, it's creating more and more of these avatars. So the desire to impose one's will on another, where does it come from? Well, surely it wouldn't exist unless there was a surplus. And that people had grasped the concept of hoarding of surpluses. So what, I, what I'm getting at is God has, has, has provided us with bounty, with everything we need. Uh, but some people think that it's right to take God's bounty and to hoard it. And they impose on others these ideas and their will because the hoarding of God's bounty can only be justified by convincing others that in some way it's natural. Um, now, I'm sure people would argue with me that the original hoarding rice barns or grain barns uh, were for times of famine and, and you know maybe they were maybe they were but the moment they stopped being communal the moment they started levying taxes on them or people started owning them individually and that's when there is hoarding of surpluses now, I've also at times argued, and, and I'm not sure about this, but I mean, it's an idea that's worth playing around with. And it's derived from Swedenborg's ideas of heaven and hell. And that is, is it possible that narcissists, are those people who are sent back to earth to serve their time for their wrongdoings, and that the earth, to a narcissist is indeed one of the layers of hell. Now, we've talked about this sort of, um, we've talked about the surplus, hoarding of surpluses, and how they got people to comply with this. And in the past, it was probably achieved by religion. Um, we, we automatically think it's through brutal and vicious suppression. I, and I don't want to discount it, but I, I suspect religion was much more important in that. But having said that, having said that, and maybe even through religion, I, I'm not discounting that in times gone by there wasn't manipulation. Something that today we might see as behavioural control. And that surely comes about from what I talk about when we began to hoard surpluses. Because there has to be some way to convince others that it's the right thing to do. Give, nevertheless, if, if we look in the sort of literature review, if we try and trace... Um, systemization of this behavioural control, we could probably trace it back to Edward Bernays. I mean, I'm sure there were people who did it before, but Edward Bernays in particular, when he applied his uncle Sigmund Freud's ideas to advertising and to propaganda. And a quote from him, we are governed by our mind, we are governed, our minds are moulded our tastes forms, our ideas suggested, largely by men we've never heard of. So the creation of desires by appealing to our egos creates this greed. 
Um, it's being responsible for so for some so many people through their own free will, giving up their will, to become pliable consumers rather than the souls that God put us on this earth to be. And I believe that's the reason why narcissism is increasing exponentially. And we've become addicted, submissive, guilty, full of self-loathing, fearful, cowards drowning in our own narcissism. And to quote Edward Bernays again, continuous interpretation is achieved by trying to control every approach to the public mind in such a manner that the public receive, receives the desired impression, often without being conscious of it. So I'm arguing that all of these things have increased narcissism exponentially. And in doing so, we've abandoned striving for the truth and seeing image as everything. Now, why did I use the word striving for the truth? Because I think truth is, is a little like liberalism or even democracy. It's an ideal rather than an abstract. It's something that we strive for but can never probably find. But just because we can't find it doesn't mean to say that we shouldn't strive for it. So we've ended up in a position where our own possessions are drowning us in our own narcissism and nihilism. So the position we now find ourselves in is the behavioural psychology is used to create desire for products. It's used to influence voting behaviour. It's used to increase opposition in inverted commas enemy regimes. In other words, to support regime change. Now some of you will know that I used to teach at a major business school and I suppose broadly speaking, you, well certainly what I taught was, was close to marketing. And marketeers would always say that behavioural psychology cannot create um, need, can only create, it can only create the desire to fulfil that need or the desire within that need. But of course, we long, long ago, we were able to, to cater for our basic needs. So if you like, if you think of Maslow's hierarchy of needs, although I often now call it Maslow's hierarchy of greed, but if you think of Maslow's hierarchy of need, then the bottom bits we, we dealt with a long time ago. So we're now only really trying to sell and make money out of the upper, more esoteric bits. And surely marketing is, is actually creating that need, or certainly behavioural psychology. We could debate it, but what I would say to you is that don't slavishly follow what the marketeers will argue on this. Anyway, it, it doesn't matter, because whatever you think about the use of behavioural psychology, its power has increased exponentially because artificial intelligence has been applied to it. So they've used AI to crack some of the problems of behavioural psychology. And then this is being actioned via social media and behavioural programming software. Now, I honestly believe that this has been undertaken with a degree of naivety. Um, I know that I'm going to sound like a, and I can't say this word, I don't think, I think I might get taken down for saying it, but I might sound like a C theorist, and I, th I think you know what I'm talking about. But I'm actually arguing the exact opposite. I, I don't believe there is an evil genius or group of evil geniuses out there. I think this is about the way we've organised society and uh, this is very natural. 
that people look at AI, or, you know, maybe even people selling AI, and, and to be honest, when I had a business, my businesses were in software, and we were selling AI solutions. And, and I can tell you there was nothing... There was no... Well, I, I didn't consider myself an evil genius at the time. And we were simply looking at... at we, we sold largely to government and arms of government. And we simply looked at issues that these arms of government had and said, well, maybe artificial intelligence can help here. Maybe there's a solution. And so all I think that's happened is that we've taken these problems that we've been applying behavioural psychology to, increasing sales, increasing voters, even increasing opposition in enemy regimes, and we've asked AI to help make it more effective. So it's, it's not a desire to rule the world, as it, you know, or to, to, to keep the world in servitude. Even though, as you may hear me argue, or you may pick up later, that that could be close to the outcome. So we, we set AI off on these problems of behavioural psychology, of human behaviour. How do we get more sales for this? How do we get more voters for this, etc.? And AI seems to have cracked the puzzle of human behaviour. And I think it cracked it in the same way that behavioural psychology did, but it's so much more explicit. And that is, it realises that if we can create narcissists, we are creating malleable consumers and citizens. Now, psychologists might argue that we cannot create narcissists, that they're born. And, you know, it's not a debate I really want to get into, but if narcissism is increasing exponentially and you can use um, psychometric tests to prove that, then somehow something is creating it. Um, now, it could be that we're behaving in more and more narcissistic, narcissistic ways without being narcissist because of the assumptions about everything we do are becoming increasingly narcissistic. And, you know, that would be a valid argument, but it doesn't detract from my argument that AI has realised that, that by more people behaving in narcissistic ways, it creates malleable consumers and citizens. And of course, not only is narcissism increasing exponentially, we find that it's most prevalent amongst the young. And that's where it, it really is reaching frightening proportions. Now, I've talked about before how the internet is full of trolls. And these trolls seem intent on dividing us into warring camps. But unfortunately, at times, when I've dug into where these trolls come from, and please, I'm not suggesting that this is true for every troll or even the majority, but some of the most controversial comments I've seen on the internet, when I've dug into it, I've been convinced that these are people being paid by a security service to put those comments on the internet. So it must be to create problems, to create war and counts. And if you remember that, that I said behavioural psychology is used to create opposition to regimes, then all I'm talking about is this follows on from that. But it gets worse. It gets worse. Because of often now, these trolls aren't actually people. But they're bots. They're bots that are designed to create strong emotions within us. And actually, when we rise to these provocations on the internet and start arguing with a bot, we're actually training it to become better. But what are we training it in? 
we're training it in hostility, in arguments, probably training it in narcissism. Now, I've talked about, I don't want to promote C theories, and my main reason is I believe that this is actually the source of these C theories. That in creating them, we create more of these narcissists, we create more of these compliant consumers, people who will keep coming back, for example, to a YouTube site that's promoting these theories and because it enlists strong emotions in us and these strong emotions are, are what make us consume. Now the, there are currently many schemes to collect information on everywhere we go and everyone we meet. And electronic money is just one of these. And they, these have been sold to governments around the world, almost every country, as smart. So you've heard of smart cities. Smart health might be another. And, you know, what government, even a really liberal government, would refuse the possibility of knowing where all its citizens are and who they meet with. You know, they, they may even say, don't worry, we're not going to do anything with it. Why do they need it? Why do they want it? And I think it's just human nature. I think it's just human nature. Now, I really don't want to promote or create a C here. Um, as these are all indic indicative of how narcissism is destroying the truth. But what is this software that's been sold, it's already been sold to governments around the world, can take back doors. And this isn't without precedence. There's some security software called Pegasus, which most, security, most, most countries use for their national security. Uh, collecting information to support their national security and there's a back door in it that's going straight to the country or to the power that created the software. Now, could it not be, could it not be that this software has been sold all around the world that collects data on everywhere we are and everyone we meet? Is it not within the realms of possibility that this also creates a back door so that a power is actually getting all the information on everybody in the world. You know, again, it might be innocent. It might be innocent. If our governments want to know where we are and who we meet for completely innocent reasons, why wouldn't a foreign government want them for completely innocent? completely innocent reasons. Now I'm certainly not trying to point to an evil genius here, nor even a group of evil genius. In fact, I'm arguing that such theories take us away from our own responsibility for complying with all that's happening. What do I mean by that? Well, what I mean is that it's very easy to see things as evil or in terms of evil geniuses, etc. When I believe that what's happening is about the system that we've all had our part in creating and in complying with. So I just think these are natural processes. It's, it's not an evil design that's going on here. However, the outcome you might see as evil. So if you want to describe it as evil, that's fine. Uh, but I'm not necessarily seeing the intent as evil. So what I'm saying is, is it really that sinister? After all, it's only a refinement of what's been going on for at least a century. Well, I have to say that I don't think that the machines are taking over the world. 
or only if you see it in a Heathcliff-like seduction. So I'm, I'm not sounding out a warning of robots suddenly starting to, to kill human beings. No, it's much more subtle than that. And I'm also arguing that these are things that have been going on for at least a century, probably a lot longer. But what we've done is we've rapidly, rapidly and massively raised the stakes because we've got so much better at doing it now. And I suppose if you do want to look at, at, at more sinister things, AI and robotics will, they will destroy most jobs. And there's no debate on this, there's no debate on what's the point of an economy if it's not providing for humanity. So there's no debate on do we want AI and robotics to take over our jobs. And if we do want that to happen, then what should become of us? What should become of the profits that are made from increased mechanisation? There's no debate about that. And I think that that is a very worrying trend. But my real concern is that we're creating more and more narcissists or avatars, going back to what I said earlier, following narcissistic assumptions. And this takes us further and further away from how God intended us to live. So that, that can't be good. That can't be a good thing. It's taking us away from how we should be living. Is this an Armageddon? Well, maybe it is. Maybe it is. If the majority of people are tricked into giving up their free will, surely that is an Armageddon of thoughts. What's the solution? Well, the solution is our, to use our free will to return to God's love. But having given up our free will and become avatars, it is very difficult, very difficult to return to God's love. But it's about valuing yourself and valuing life. Above all, stop hating. Starting with stop hating yourself. Reject the trinkets we're being offered and especially those of virtual consumption and accumulation. Now I could glibly say, and, and it's true, but it's very difficult to do, but if we all got rid of our smartphones, then all of these plans would be in tatters. So I'm asking you to take responsibility for yourself, take responsibility for your loved ones, take responsibility the community and ultimately humanity. Build self-reliance. Build self-love. Is this really eschatology? Well, when we understand the manipulation that's going on and truly turn our backs on it, so get rid of our mobile, our, our smartphones, then maybe it is. Because once a majority can see through the manipulation that's occurring, then it's game over. Well, I really hope you've enjoyed this. Because these are real events, I can't say how reg regularly I'm going to be adding to this subsection. Um, you know, because I don't know how often they're going to occur. But I would imagine that they'll be at least every couple of months, maybe monthly. Now, if you'd like to know when that's going to be, please subscribe and hit the button and you'll get information on, on when new ones are released. I'd love you to make comments and ask questions. And if you do, I'll, I'll attempt to answer them. 
as honestly as I can. I promise you that there's no attempt on this this channel or this part of this channel of me. At, there'll be no attempt by me at any type of subterfuge. I'll try to be as honest and open as I possibly can be. Inevitably, there will be some of you who disagree with my interpretation. And, you know, we can agree to disagree. Um, but what you're seeing is real stuff here. What I'd love you to do, if you enjoyed this, is look at my other sections. Particularly, I've written novels about magic in Java, and they contain much more information in them, especially me trying to understand the theories of magic, the psychology of it, and I try and intersperse them with a sort of spiritual dimension. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, and God bless you.